Hey everybody, it's Dave here from Dragon Hill Games, and I'm back at you with another Pioneer deck tech. Well, love them or hate them, goblins are a force to be reckoned with in Pioneer, especially with some recent additions from some of the newest sets. Before we get started, I just want to mention you can find the deck list for this video in the description of this video. And as always, if you're a subscriber, I want to thank you for being here. We really appreciate your support. And if not, now's a great time to consider hitting that subscribe button. Alright, let's talk Pioneer Goblins. This mono red wrecking crew is a force to be reckoned with. The key thing to remember when playing goblins in almost any format is that you're going to be making a lot of them and a lot of them are going to die, but that's okay because dying is what goblins do best. The general premise behind goblin decks is make lots of goblins and then make them bigger for some massive swings, so let's look at how we can accomplish this in Pioneer. Skirt Prospector is a great turn 1 drop and gives us a sack outlet so we have fuel to do some really busted things in later turns. And Goblin Instigator gives us some sacrificial lambs and really helps power out things like Foundry Street Denizen and Goblin Piledriver. Speaking of which, Foundry Street Denizen and Goblin Piledriver are two of our heaviest hitters. Foundry Street Denizen gets plus 1 plus 0 until end of turn whenever we bring another Goblin into play. So there'll be plenty of turns where he's getting plus 3, 4, 5, or even more. And Goblin Pile Driver gets plus 2, plus 0 until end of turn for each other goblin that attacks along with him. There'll be plenty of turns when you're adding 6, 8, or even 10 to his attack power. And combining either of these two with either an Ember Cleave or a Teamer Battle Rage is going to mean a lot of pain for your opponent. And up next we have two of the strongest enablers in the deck in Legion Loyalist and Reckless Bushwhacker. Legion Loyalist is a phenomenal include in this deck. For just one red mana we get a 1-1 hasting goblin that has battalion, and whenever Legion Loyalist and at least two other creatures attack, creatures you control gain first strike and trample until end of turn and can't be blocked by creature tokens. And while it may be tempting to play him out on turn 1 for 1 mana and get in there for 1 point of damage, he really is better served used later in the game. If you play him out on turn 1, he's going to draw a ton of fire from your opponent, so think of him more as a combat trick. Remember, he has haste, so toss him in there when you already have an established board state, and get in there for a massive swing with a bunch of goblins that all have first strike and trample. And Reckless Bushwhacker is the kind of creature that could completely throw your opponent off guard. He has the awesome ability that when he enters the battlefield, if his surge cost was paid, other creatures we control get plus 1 plus 0 until end of turn and gain haste. So ideally, we either want to play a Foundry Street Denizen or a Goblin Pile Driver, maybe throw down some tokens with a Goblin Instigator, and then drop a Reckless Bushwhacker on the field for the surge cost and get in there for a massive, unexpected swing. And finally, let's have a look at some of our utility creatures. Goblin Warchief reduces the cost of all our goblin spells by 1, and keep in mind that this does reduce the surge cost on Reckless Bushwhacker, and it makes things like Goblin Instigator 1 red mana for 2 goblin token. Goblin Chain Whirler is just great value in that he's a mini board wipe, and also a 3-3 first striker is just generally difficult to deal with on his own. And Cranko Tin Street Kingpin helps keep our board full of goblins. And he can be especially nasty if you flash equip an Embercleave to him with his trigger on the stack. Speaking of Embercleave, this card is a perfect fit for this deck. We're going to be swinging with a lot of goblins, so more often than not, you're going to be paying just 2 red mana to flash equip this to something. And sticking it to a buffed up Foundry Street Denizen or Goblin Pile Driver will usually mean GG for your opponent. Teamer Battle Rage serves the same purpose in that we just hit one of our big guys for some surprise, double strike, and trample. Dino Charge gives one of our creatures plus 2 plus 0 until end of turn for just 1 red mana but we can overload it for 1 red and 2 to give all of our creatures plus 2 plus 0 until end of turn if we end up in a situation where we've gone wide. And finally, Dragon Fodder is an extra way to generate some cheap gobos to power out things like Foundry Street Denizen and Goblin Pile Driver. Our land package is pretty straightforward in that we're running 3 Castle Embrith, which is a perfect fit for this deck. It can really add some late game punch in games where we've gone wide. We're also running 13 basic mountains and 4 ramming up ruins to help us get across the finish line. And finally our sideboard is loaded with awesome answers for the best decks in this format. Banefire helps us close out against control opponents, while Fry helps us deal with things like Saheeli and Feldar Guardians. Hazaret the Fervent comes in handy against other go wide strategies, while Lava Coil helps us deal with pesky recursive strategies. 
Pithing Needle helps us shut down annoying combo decks like Sahili and Oko, as well as dealing handily with things like Deathrite Shaman. And finally, Vandal Blast helps us get the job done against artifact strategies. Alright, I really hope you guys enjoyed having a look at my Pioneer Mono Red Goblin deck list. As I mentioned earlier, you can find the deck list in the description below. Why don't you guys let me know what you think of the deck in the comments section, and we'll see you again soon.